Hi there, that's right, my name's Nick Dutch, back on the camera again, one more time, that's right, standard introduction. <laughs> I'm doing a video response actually today, this is to a Rational Roundtable, who I'm sure you may be aware of, um, is a Christian YouTuber, and he's mentioned the intense frustration that he's got with uh, the charismatic movements and the fundamentalists and how they are avoiding the issue that they're not actually living in accordance with what Christianity is supposed to be about. And as a result of that, you know, he's really rather pissed off, which is very understandable indeed. But the, I mean, the problem the Rational Roundtable has got is very similar to the problem that we've all got, no matter what's religious denomination we're a part of, no matter what political strain we're a part of. People think they understand, then they don't apply sufficient scientific reasoning to the contents of their own mind. They then speak their own mind, often publicly, and people gather together around these people, and as such, groups develop. The group develops group think, and then the group starts doing the thinking, and the people stop thinking. They stop thinking for themselves, they stop thinking for, for anything really. They um, adopt certain ideas or precepts and see them as being true. When something seems to be true, it doesn't mean to say that it is true. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't allow themselves to be skeptical of their own experiences. If I was to have an experience today that felt like the presence of God, I could, for instance, believe in it, and I could believe that that thing was God. However, if I was rather inarticulate, or had a small vocabulary, or didn't understand the meanings of the words that I was using, I could then jump to the conclusion that what I had was hard and fast natural science facts rather than a belief. And a belief is totally different from hard and fast natural science facts. And even knowledge is different from a belief. And possibly different from a natural science hard and fast fact as well, depending upon the quality of definitions that one is applying to the word knowledge. So it all gets really rather difficult. When someone is a part of a religious group, they're more likely to interpret belief as being fact. They are more likely, so it seems, to take the instruction that they are given, the religious instruction, as being not just a canon of faith, but an instruction of conduct. To say, that's what you should be doing. But, there's a lot of noise going on. And the noise doesn't actually help people to be able to differentiate between what is useful and essentially what is not useful. The idea of importance, and what is actually important, and why it's important, gets confused. You know, it's affected by the title, and the, and the title in this case is Christian, and the presupposition is, because something is Christian, it can either do no wrong, or it thinks the same as somebody else with that title. But that's not true. Certainly not. I'm tempted to say that life itself has different compartments. And people seem to get the compartments confused. I mean, you can have a spiritual dimension, you can have a religious dimension, you can have a political dimension. Uh, you've got the dimension of your standard day-to-day -day life. And all of these are like compartments. And the understanding of what is important and which particular compartment they should be focusing in on or which particular ideas fit into which departments can get a bit mixed up. That is the danger of the fundamentalists because they go around mixing these ideas up for people. People who are more likely to treat what they've been told as being an instruction of conduct rather than anything else. And also these people who are 
doing these charismatic broadcasts may turn around and say, well, I believe it, and therefore create the assumption that these things are true. And true as in hard and fast, concrete and solid, just like, as I often demonstrate, my cigarette lighter making a flame, so on and so forth. Natural laws in action. I recently came out as a believer in God. Interesting statement. But precisely what does it mean? Does it mean, number one, that I accept biblical definitions of God? Does it mean, number two, that I accept any particular religious individual's interpretation of God? No, in both those cases. This is my own conceptualization. Does it mean, number three, that I believe in a creator being? No. No, it doesn't. So what precisely is this? Do I believe in a spirit of the universe? Well, it's a bit of a grey area. But, the, but, but can you see where I'm going with this? What I'm doing is I'm pointing out that you can't always assume that you understand the meanings of the, that is behind what someone is saying. And as such, it is easy to misrepresent in various different ways what that individual means. I mean, in my case, my belief in God, my belief in God, okay, is an absence of knowledge that this thing exists. It's useful for me to think that way under some strange circumstances which are difficult to define and it provides me with some rather intangible benefits. But it certainly doesn't affect my views on science, education or politics at all. This is purely something I'm doing up here really, you know, maybe it is just a form of mental exercise but it doesn't really matter though. But for some people if I was to turn around to them and say, I believe in God, an image would appear in their mind as to what I mean. And that could be positive, that could be negative, that could be there to misrepresent me, that could be there to take whatever the hell I am, and to present that in a light which is too positive, maybe. Or lead somebody to believe that I follow a certain political line, when in fact, I do not. So, the whole language thing is difficult. Also, as I'm sure you can tell by now, humans are tribal, which means that when people use language, it's in many cases, but by no means all, but in many cases, there to cement the membership of the tribe. Okay. When you've got some upper middle class people having dinner, they tend to speak in with very short sentences. And every sentence has an assumed meaning, which has some kind of correlation to assumed beliefs that these people seem to have. And that's just tribal noise making. And within religious groups, there's just tribal noise-making, like dogs barking, cats meowing, what, whatever. It's just tribal noise-making. But these noises these little tribes can make can be misunderstood by the people within the groups, as well as people outside of the groups looking in. So the whole damn dynamic is incredibly complex. And as far as creating some kind of change to Christianity, I don't think you could. I don't think that you can take Christianity and transform it. Because there is not one Christianity, nor are there so many different denominations. When I mean, you've got your denominations, you've got the politics that's within the group as well. And then you've got the individuals. And there's very little um, genuine correlation between these individuals and this apparent or alleged egregor. Anyway, that's enough of my rambles for today. Insert standard outro here.